G'day YouTube, it's Marty from Music Video Master. In this video, I'm going to show you how to rip the audio and video content from a physical media disc such as a DVD. Let's go. Welcome back to Music Video Master where we believe that music is better on DVD. Behind me is my growing DVD collection, and I really enjoy putting a disc into the player and watching it on my TV. But what if I want to watch that video on my phone or a mobile device? In this case, we need to rip the video and audio content off the disc and transfer it to a digital file such as an mp4. In this video today I'm going to show you how I do that using three free programs on your computer. So this process won't cost you a cent but I'm assuming that you will already have a computer and a disk drive that's capable of reading the physical media. This is my external disk drive which reads and writes DVDs and I've got another one that does Blu-rays. So just check that you have the right equipment before you start. You might also want to have some external storage capacity because when you start ripping lots of media onto your computer, of course, the space will fill up quickly. <laughs> Now I just want to make something really clear before we start. I don't condone anything that is illegal or unlawful. You must do your own due diligence to determine for yourself whether ripping your content is indeed lawful or not. And if it isn't, or if you feel uncomfortable about the whole thing, just don't do it. This is an educational video that shows you potentially how you could back up a physical disc that you own legitimately. All right, so let's go over to my computer and have a look at how to do this. All right, so to begin, you're gonna to need to install three programs. And the first one is called Make MKV. It's available for Windows and Macintosh. Just Google Make MKV and here it is. So at the time of uploading this video, Make MKV is currently free. I don't know whether it will always be free in the future. However, it does say in the description on the home page here uh, that functionality to open DVD discs is free and will always stay free. So I'm fairly confident that this is going to be around for a while. On the left, you have your download options and choose the best option for you. In my case, it's Mac operating system, but I've already installed that, so I won't show you the installation part. And the other piece of software that we're going to need is called Handbrake. Handbrake is also free software available on Windows and Macintosh. If you go to the home page, it should come up right away with the download button. Um, if not, it's probably up here. Again, I'm not gonna show you on screen downloading and installing the program because I've already done that. So I'm gonna assume that you have both of these programs on your computer ready to roll. And there is one other free program that you'll most likely need to rip your DVDs and that is VLC Player. Again, VLC Player is completely free and most people already have this installed on their computer but if you don't just search for VLC player and always go to the official website and you can see that I'm on a Mac and the website recognizes that I'm on a Mac and it suggests this download button for Mac OS but it's also available for Windows computers. Again, I already have this installed on my computer, so I'm not gonna run through that on this video. I'm just going to assume that you have these three free programs already installed before you begin. So we're gonna open up the disc with Make MKV. Just open up the program, and the computer's gonna start reading the disc. 
it should only take a few seconds and it's going to read the basic information about this disc. Next, you need to click on the little DVD icon and it's going to scan the disc. This could take a little while depending on how much data is on the DVD. And I should also mention that this may work for Blu-ray. Sometimes the Blu-ray encryption uh, cannot be broken by Make MKV. And it will also work for .iso files. So if you have a file which is like a backup copy of a DVD in .iso format, you can load that instead of a physical disk and it should be able to do the same thing. Okay, so after a short amount of time, it has actually scanned the disc and it's found two different titles here. The first one has 16 chapters or 16 sections, which is the 16 songs on this DVD. And that's, a, as you can see, a total of 3.7 gigabytes. And it's also found another section with five chapters, and that one's only 359 megabytes. So very small, and if we just click on this drop down arrow, it's only in stereo sound. So I'm actually not sure what this is. I mean, we could leave the box checked and just see what it is, but we don't have to. I think I'm quite happy to uncheck that box this time. I'm more interested in the 16 songs on my DVD. Again, if we click the left little drop down arrow, you can see that there are actually two types of audio. We've got stereo and surround sound. In some cases, you may want to leave both of these audio options, but I'm only interested in the 5.1 surround mix. So I'm gonna uncheck the stereo. And now we're ready to rip the content off the DVDs. First you need to choose a location where it's going to be saved. So over here I'm just gonna choose my desktop as the location for these files to go so we can see them easily and just click on the button to make MKV. Again this could take a little while depending how much content is on the disk. So I won't bore you to tears by showing you the computer scanning every section of this DVD. I'll resume the recording when it's done. Okay, so when that's all finished, you'll get a little notification. And altogether that took about 20 minutes. So Make MKV has done its thing. It has ripped the content from the physical DVD disc and converted it into an MKV file, which is right here. Now, make MKV is going to give it a funny random file name, but don't worry, that's the correct content. It's just over three gigabytes, and that's because it has all 16 songs from the DVD in one continuous track. Let's have a look at it. I'm going to play it in VLC player to preview it. Okay, so it's over an hour long and it's got all of those tracks on it. Sometimes you'll get lucky and the DVD will be encoded in such a way that MKV can read the individual songs and it can rip each individual song separately. So that's a really good outcome if it happens, but more often than not, every song will be stuck together in one continuous file like this one is. Now, some people might be happy with that. Uh, and also some people might be happy with the MKV format, but MKV is not the easiest format for every device to play. And so I want to do two things. I want to convert this to MP4 and I also want to chop it up into its individual tracks so that I've got separate files for each song. So in order to do that, I need to use my media player here, VLC. And um, let's just uh, play it again. 
So the first thing I need to do is to note the times when the songs change. So if I scrub this along, and this can be a little bit fiddly to try and scrub accurately. So that's just the beginning of the Fatboy Slim track. And there we have Darkness. darkness. So at exactly three minutes and 31, we know that it's in between track one and track two. So just note that down somewhere on a piece of paper. And I'm gonna do the next track as well. I'm not gonna show you every single track, but I'll just do two tracks on video so that you get the hang of it. Now the next track is obviously gonna start at 3.31. Okay, there it is. Now, um, I also should mention that this process is a lot easier if you can somehow read the audio waves. If you've got a media player which shows the audio waves, you can see where the volume goes down to nothing and you can jump straight to that section. VLC player doesn't do that. Uh, if you've got a Macintosh, then iMovie does it, but there's just one problem. iMovie doesn't accept MKV files, so you might have to convert them first. But uh, anyway, this is just the, the principal idea of what to do. Now you can see that track two finishes at seven minutes and 36 seconds. So I'm gonna note that as well. And uh, we can just uh, leave that one alone for now. Now we're gonna open up Handbrake. So Handbrake, the first thing that it's gonna prompt you to do is to open the source. And we point to the MKV file that we made. Select it. Now we're just gonna go through a few settings here. The first one is uh, your dimensions for the video. I have mine set to 720p and 30 frames per second. I find that that is a good trade-off between quality and file size. Now, of course, you could uh, go into the drop-down options here. You could do, you know, a 1080 high-quality conversion or you could do even up to a 4k conversion but if we're starting with DVD quality which is maximum 720p I don't really see uh, any value in trying to upscale to a much higher resolution and if you're watching your video on a small screen like a, a phone or a tablet it's not going to make a difference anyway and if you're watching the video on a big screen like a smart TV, it's going to upscale that. So I really think that 720p is enough. So I've chosen 720p and 30 frames per second. Now along here, you've got a few different options. Go to dimensions and make sure you allow upscaling. That's really important. Uh, otherwise the, the video may look funny. The only other one that I'm going to worry about today is audio. This is the source audio. It's a 5.1 surround sound and it's AC3 format, which is Dolby Digital. That's the only audio option we have. Now you can recode that into something else, but I'm just going to select AC3 pass through. And what that's going to do is pass through just re-encodes the audio exactly as it was without changing anything. Okay, so now the next thing is to tell Handbrake when to start and when to stop this uh, encoding of the original file. It's fairly straightforward. Up here where it says range, at the moment chapters is selected. Let's change that to seconds. And remember before we said that the first video ends at three minutes and 31. Mine's got some random numbers here because I was playing with Handbrake just before recording this video. So zero hours, three minutes 
and 31 seconds, starting at zero and finishing here. Now let's give the file a name. So this one is block rock and beats. And it's going to be an MP4 file. That's what we want. And let's just make sure that we are saving it in a good location. So I'm going to put it on my desktop. Okay, so we can see that everything's good to go now. We've got 720p quality with upscaling allowed. We've got the correct audio settings and we've got the correct time settings. So then all you have to do is go ahead and press start. And that's going to take just a few minutes. All right, that took a few minutes, but now it's done. You can see that I've got my MP4 file on my desktop with the name that I named it. And if we just check the properties, and you can see here it's 94 megabytes, it's an MP4. Um, we have 966 by 720 pixels, which is our uh, 720p HD quality based on the original aspect of this video. And we've got six audio channels, meaning that we do have surround sound for this track. Let's just check it in VLC player to make sure it works. And the sound is off because like I said, I don't want to get a copyright claim. So I've just turned the sound down, but trust me, it works. Or I can just even give you a little sample. So yeah, the sound works. Success. All right. So now I'm just going to show you another little thing, a quick hack that I've discovered. When you want to do the next track, just all the other settings stay the same. The source file stays the same. The only thing that's going to change here is the time that we're going to uh, select for the track. So track two starts where track one finishes. So I'm just going to highlight and copy that. I'm going to paste it into the starting time. And I noted down before that the second track finishes at seven minutes and 36 seconds. So just by leaving everything the same and just modifying the times here, we're also going to give it a new name uh, or else it's going to overwrite the file that we just made. Now I can just hit start and it's going to process that track as well. And you can see here, that's the new file being created. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell and leave a comment. That really helps my channel to grow and helps me to produce more content like this for you. Until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next video.